everybody, my name is Erin Dobbs. And I'm Chris Savage. Welcome to AMA Air. Coming up today, model aviation contributor Joe Haas sits down with Tuskegee Airman Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson. We take a look back at National Model Aviation Day festivities here at AMA headquarters. And we'll see how the Rochester Air Modeling Society is helping one of their own. Thanks again for joining us for our debut episode of AMA Air. We're excited to be bringing you the top air modeling news from around the world on the first of every month. So make sure you click the subscribe button and you won't miss a single episode. That's right. And now let's get started with our top headlines from September. The AMA Education Department has announced the new UAS for STEM program designed to encourage students to learn about the SUAS or drone phenomenon, teamwork, competition, and success, all through STEM. The program started as a NAVAIR education outreach program sponsored by the AMA, but it has since been turned over to the Academy to take nationally. Students will complete an online curriculum and build the Quadzilla kit, which will contain everything they need to complete their mission. Teams will then compete regionally at AMA fields in the spring of 2016, culminating in a national competition held at the IAC in Muncie, Indiana. New, long-awaited features are coming to DJI's line of Phantom 3 and Inspire multirotors. Pilots can now use one of five new intelligent flight modes that rely on GPS location, allowing for semi-automated flying. The new firmware update is free and available now. After nearly 3,000 comments from California AMA members, Governor Brown has vetoed a bill that would restrict model flying. Senate Bill 142, which was originally intended to address privacy concerns, was later amended so that anyone flying under 350 feet over private property would be considered trespassing. Governor Brown said this legislation could expose the occasional hobbyist and FAA-approved commercial user to burdensome litigation. AMA clubs from all over the country have raised more than $28,000 for charity in conjunction with National Model Aviation Day held on August 15th. The AMA Foundation event brought participation from over 200 clubs this year and was headlined by an event at AMA headquarters that saw nearly 500 attendees from the surrounding community. It featured a motorcycle rally, free full-scale plane rides for kids by the EAA Young Eagles, FPV drone races, rocket building, and a speaker from the Wounded Warrior Project. Model Aviation staff were on hand and brought us these highlights from the event. In April of 1943, a young Howard University graduate from Detroit, Michigan reported for duty at the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama, and his story during the years that follow would be one he would tell to millions over the next 70 years. This past weekend, Model Aviation Magazine contributor Joe Haas talked with this true American hero, Tuskegee Airman Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Jefferson. 
Alex Jefferson, you have quite a history as I'm a, a survivor. <laughs> a survivor, ni uh, 93 years young, yes. uh, a survivor to be sure. Mm -hmm. uh, native of Detroit. That's right. P-51 pilot. What a red tail, yes indeed. What aircraft did you fly? Started out in the PT-17, went to the BT-13, the vibrator, went to the AT-6, went to the P-40 for, for 10 hours down to Tuskegee Army Airfield, almost ground loop that son of a gun, <laughs> but you take off and you, if you don't rack in some trim tab, right trim tab, your right leg gets congealed. Went into P-39s, I got 200 hours in that foot. I loved it. Straight and level, the one with the door, the engine behind you. Air Cobra. Air Cobra. Air Cobra. Then I went to the P-51 Mustang. It was beautiful. Now you've done some modeling work, aero modeling work aero as well. Aero modeling. Did, had a ball with the Sky, Sky Masters. Sky Masters, yep. Had a ball. Yep. Radio control, but I still couldn't I still couldn't master because I'm looking at it come towards me and I want it to go right. And what do you do? And what happens? It comes left until Joe House had to get behind me. <laughs> We've got a picture of Joe <laughs> teaching me. A little, little, little bit of a bear hug A little there. bit of a bear hug. Yeah. I made model airplanes all my life. Drawing pictures of reading magazines all my life. So when... World War II came along, I'm primed for, for the Air Army Air Corps. I didn't want to go to the Navy because I couldn't swim in the first place. <laughs> but so, that was so exciting. You, so you, you understand and, and appreciate how model aviation I had all can, the principles of flying. I knew the principle of flying even before I got there. Aviation <laughs> has played an integral role in your life. Expound on that a little bit. Number one, they said, well, Jeff, why did you join the Army Air Corps? <clears throat> I look at him and say, hey, wait a minute. World War II is going on. Every man is in the Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, white, black. If you're white or black or green or purple, if I were, if I had been re uh, drafted, I'd be a buck private. As a black man in the buck, I'd be a buck private, making thirty, making twenty-one dollars a month. The opportunity came to join the Army Air Corps. It opened up for blacks in 1941, but you had to be a college graduate. I finished Clark Clark College in Atlanta, in 1942, right after December 7th. I qualified for the Army Air Corps. And as a cadet, you made $75 a month. You slept on a bed with, in a room, and you ate at a table with a waitress. After nine months, you became a second lieutenant. You made $150 a month. With the excitement of flying an airplane, it was exciting. World War II was exciting. Came along with combat, which was exciting. I went overseas, and I was a replacement pilot with the 332nd Fighter Group. And I flew 18 missions, long-range missions, escorting B-17s and B-24s from Italy to Germany, Italy to Ploesti. That's when I saw a B-17 explode due to flak. And all of a sudden, it came to me. I'd been ex exciting, ex enjoying myself. And when I saw this B-17 explode... With the crew of 10? That's right. I yeah. said to myself, Jeff, you just saw 10 men die. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I puked inside of that, air, that oxygen mask. Hell, I was at 25,000 feet. War is hell. And the men who are real heroes are the ones that we left yeah. behind. They're the real heroes. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us today. We're going we're gonna to leave now and go out and touch those old birds. Ah, uh, just okay. to touch.
We will end each show by taking a page from Model Aviation Magazine, literally. Each show will end with a segment titled, I Am the AMA, where we will showcase hobbyists, model aviation clubs, or events. Today, we take you to the Rochester Air Modeling Society flying field in New York. The last weekend in August, they held the 13th annual Northeast Model Helicopter Jamboree. Activities included demos, flying lessons, concessions, giveaways, contests, fireworks, and even night flying. This year was a little different, though. The Rochester Aeromodeling Society donated proceeds from the Jamboree to the Arthritis Foundation. AMA member and contest director Chris Reibert's two-year-old daughter Haley was recently diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's great to see the modeling community rally to support our members through events like this. Yes, the event was well attended, weather was great, and of course Haley was on site to enjoy the show. If you would like to help Haley, visit our website at air.modelaircraft.org where we've got a link to Team Haley's donation page. Thanks for joining us for this episode of AMA Air. We truly hope you've enjoyed your look at the news around the hobby. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you're not yet a member of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, head over to www.modelaircraft.org and sign up today. And of course, join us again next month for another edition of AMA Air.